Return to Rimworld 4. What is essentially going to be season two here of the Zombie City playthrough? Now, last time we sort of had to. I, I wanted to go back to the drawing board a little bit because we saw that certain mods didn't play well with the zombie setup that we had going on. So I wanted to get big massive zombies, big groups of very threatening, angry things blocking us off from certain parts of the map that we'd have to try and work our way through. Obviously threatens our traders, raiders, whatever else. Just this constant, almost siege going on that we would have to try and survive up against. Now unfortunately that didn't really go too well because certain mods... <clears throat> combat extended basically made it so that in certain scenarios with certain loadouts you would be invincible as you saw with yesterday's episode if you managed to get that far through it and, and honestly shout out to you if you did because it went on for what like an hour um the the final siege where i let the zombies into the base spawned in like 2000 zombies let them into the base our guys literally starved to death our guys in power armor starved to death before the zombies were able to take them out so in my opinion that was kind of a waste of time we want to get something that's a nice medium we're not playing with combat extended this time around but now i'm going to focus more on the small amounts of zombies the smaller groups of zombies but they are much more lethal so we're looking at rather than the resident evil style zombie which i think we can all agree we played as last time rather than something like the dead dead zombie this time it's going to be more of the the infected more of the left 4 dead style the 28 weeks later style very fast very angry zombie where infection rates are super super deadly that's what we're going to be trying with this time and that's why it's all going to be about the contagion and things along those type of things as well so i have some characters that you might recognize our survivors from last time one person survived one person sort of disappeared and we'll we'll, we'll pick that up as we go into here my mod list i will make available below i've set up a new collection on steam it's more or less the same stuff we're not actually using uh facial stuff there so you can go ahead and ignore that we're more or less using the same stuff with some other things changed around as well it's a fairly sizable mod list so what i'll do same thing as usual stick the mod lo loader in the description the, the mod loader mod list so that you can very quickly load into it get it all set up but i'll talk about that more at the end of the video let's dive in to what is going to be round two now this time around i've disabled the automatic planet killer weapon and we'll decide after a certain i don't know how long it'll be we'll, we'll arbitrarily decide i'll let you guys vote on it how long we should have before a planet affecting thing will happen so the whole planet will adjust in some way i do like the idea of having somewhat of a time to get ourselves nice and set up here before something big happens so last time obviously we had the planet killer going for three years the issue with the base game planet killer is it will just straight wipe out the planet that's not really what we're looking for um we'll start off with randy why not why not start off with randy how we'll go anytime though just on medium to start off with here nothing particularly dangerous nothing particularly risky here right let's randomize things oh let's randomize things a little bit and let's go for boom no let's start again Boom. Lubricants. That's way better. That's way better. Yeah, you could have had Sarah or you could have had lubricants. I think we can all agree that was a much better generation. So we are starting with my custom scenario there. What that means is wherever we spawn, we will always spawn in, in an abandoned city. I'll quickly talk you through the zombie land settings here. So like I said, I want it to be more of a virus-based rage zombie apocalypse type of thing. So we've got zombies appear all the time from the map edges. This is going to be relevant because I've got some mods that actually affect how the map edges work. We'll talk about that when we get into the game. Zombies will only attack humans this time around. They're not interested in animals. They only will gun for us. And this is going to make them a lot, lot harder because last time we had things like, you know, thrombo spawning and mega sloth spawning in. And then the zombies were going for those and then the, the they're obviously retaliating. The animals were retaliating and killing off a lot of the zombies. This time around, very, very different. So I enemies will still attack zombies obviously raiders whatever if a zombie's running towards them i'm just going to ignore it right so we're keeping that on animals attack zombies that means that animals will attack zombies when they hunt so zombies won't hunt animals but if there's a lion and he's pretty hungry he'll think boy there's a nice squishy zombie for me to go into battle so we'll go and do that what would zombie just destroy only doors I'm still happy with. There's been some debate in Discord whether we should say nothing or everything or only doors. I'm happy to say only doors. We're also going to have them only attack when agitated. And there's a good reason for doing this in a second. We're playing with permanent elevated zombie senses. So as it says there, zombies are very sensitive. You can sense you in your trails over many cells. They have supreme tracking abilities. And they're also going to be able to probably run us down very quickly as you'll see in a second zombies rage if the group gets too large increase their damage and their speed essentially if, if zombie groups get very big so we actually have a reason to go out and hunt them down now we can't just bunker down in our base and just hope for the best we're probably gonna have to go and hunt them and there's another another couple of reasons why in a second you'll see as well zombies are no longer easy to kill because there's only gonna be a few of them and they can recover from injuries i'm sort of debating this one we'll see how the gameplay is like with this when we actually get in there before i decide whether or not to turn this one off we've got zombies eating injured creatures zombies eating corpses as well now for the zombie setup 85 percent of them will spawn in as ordinary zombies but because there are so fewer zombies we don't have to worry about you know having potentially 20 to 50 suicide bomber zombies or eight tank zombies turn up at once like we saw last time 
because there's going to be much fewer zombies, if one electrifying zombie turns up, that's almost like a boss monster. You know, like in Left 4 Dead, where, you know, a tank would turn up or whatever, or a, or a spitter or whatever. It would be kind of a big deal. This time around, we're going to have that sort of similar effect. Suicide bomber zombies, toxic splasher zombies, and electrifying zombies. Not personally using the tanky operator zombies or the mining zombies. Tanky operator zombies are basically capable of destroying everything and i like having the choke points we might turn these up as we go through and we'll see how the difficulty is days until the zombies come three i like that one last time i had etc just one this is the default three days so this way it'll give us time to get our base up i might even increase that just to five so that we can really get off the ground here there's never more than 100 zombies we might want to increase that we'll see how these zombies how dangerous they truly are as we play through and of course all of this we can actually just in game so it's not really a big deal 20 zombies per colonist i think as far as well and then one times col col colony multiply this time rather than the 10 times we had last time now here's the important thing zombie speed if they're calm is 1.2 times than our colonist so those guys are going to be faster than us We've got the adrenaline mod, so in theory we can still outrun them, but of course we'll pay the price if we do so. We want to stand our ground and fight ideally, and we want to pick them off. If they're excited, then things are going to get messy, because they will absolutely run us down again. Very similar to more of a Left 4 Dead uh, 28 weeks slash 28 days later style of zombie there. They are mad, and they are fast. Damage multiplier, three times. Zombies barely even damaged us last time at all. Now I want to see some real lethality. We've got the infection. The infection is the big thing here rather than the actual zombies ripping us apart. Although that's definitely going to happen as well. We've got a lot of mods that affect weapons and armor. So I want to try and keep it balanced, which is why I've upped the damage there. Reduce gun turret consumption. It's up 50%. I couldn't think of a good middle ground for this, so I've literally gone for the middle ground. Lots of people were saying, don't have it consume any ammo. That'll make the zombies a bit more, you know, micromanage you. That's the price you pay. A lot of people are saying, leave it to 100% because the zombies are a lot harder now. I'm happy with 50. I think that's fine. Risk that a zombie bite is infectious. 100%. If you are bitten, that is it. That is the end game. I do like the idea of certain things like, and I'm going to keep harping back on with this because this is the sort of quintessential zombie film in my opinion. you got the 28 weeks later style zombie. Certain people can become carriers. Now, I believe we didn't actually see it last time. The zombie land has sort of a, a carrier slash half zombie style thing, which hopefully we'll see as we play here. Time till infection, then we have to react very, very quickly if someone's bitten. Four hours before you'll know the infection. Then you have 12 hours for it to be treatable. After that time, they're guaranteed to become a zombie two days and they will convert over so this is the time basically this is where you can treat the initial wound this one is where it turns yellow and not the actual sorry orange there not the actual wound the, the actual wound won't turn orange but the uh the the, the treatment sort of uh, ui will turn orange then you know okay this guy's going to be infected in 12 hours unless we do something for example amputate a leg after that point, the guarantees become a zombie, and there you go. So there are certain other things that can happen. It does say in the description, many players make the mistake to end the life of their infected colonists too early. Zombieland while cruel has a few, su few surprises built in to make the phase useful for you. So we'll have to see what happens with that one. So, and then everything's more or less the same there. Treatment in the bed stops infections. I've turned that off because we want the, the infections to be a big, big deal for the colony here. Let's get on with it then. Now, again, we're spawning in an abandoned city, so it doesn't really matter where we go, because there's always going to be a city for us to live in. Um, and I'm also playing with things like real ruins, which I think is going to be very, very fun. We're going to have more reason to go out into the world this time around and actually see these ruins, these dilapidated cities, things that have been destroyed. With real ruins, it's a very, very cool mod, whereby if you have the mod enabled, your server is basically... Uh, your, your, map is basically uploaded to a server and then in return when you go to new provinces you might get given a random map which will be um you know something another player has used when they've been wiped out so you know when raiders turn up you get that whole end screen maybe someone else will find the ruins of this place that's what it's meant to represent us finding the ruins of another player's colony so i mean it is apparently somewhat op because you might just end up in a colony with like loads of power armor or something like that or real end game turrets or whatever so we'll have to wait and see how we go there boreal forest it is 3.1 degrees. That's a little bit cold. I'm looking for somewhere similar to that. On a river, on a road would be the, the perfect scenario for us here. Um, we've got on a river, on a road, in hills as well. That could be interesting. Then again, we are going to spawn in a city, right? So it's not such a big deal. We want to be well connected. We want to be able to go and loot other abandoned cities and visit other settlements. Well, like down here then. I'm looking for major roads too. Something like here could be kind of good. Um, asphalt road, river. That could work for us. Uh, we could always go with something like this. It's on a road. It's by the sea as well. And it's a big old road. I'm happy to go here. We've got a couple of other settlements nearby. Actually, three friendly factions there nearby. Some pirates too, but you kind of expect that, right? It's remod. And now you're going to see this incredible preset. I'm going to take you through our characters. We have, of course, returning for his second season after his glorious survival last time, the mighty Rex Buckley. Slightly older, slightly more scarred, slightly more twisted. Rex Buckley making his return there with... 
Not full blown power armor this time. Full blown power armor far too powerful with combat extended. So, and I'd, I'd say that even in the base game, it's probably a little too much to start with power armor. So I've taken his gear. It's become damaged over time. He's had to throw away, you know, bits of it. His pauldrons, his arm supports, whatever. He's got cut the helmet in half too, so he's only got light helmet and light armor there as his body. Mercenary recruit, banished soldier, I mean, that's in fair. And then he's got very similar skills to what we left off with last time, with the caveat that he's actually capable of social, because last time Rex Buckley wasn't capable of social, but he's had to learn how to convince people to do the things he wants in the wilderness there. That's not meant to be creepy, that's just meant to be a backstory for our good friend, Rick Crimes. Last time we saw Rick Crimes at the beginning of last series, devoured by a horde of voracious zombies after he had a mental breakdown, wandered straight into the horde, got eaten alive. But he didn't die, my friends. For some reason, the zombies left him. They decided maybe he's had enough, or they decided that something something more juicy had walked by. This man, he'd be like a he'd be like a real cheap greasy pork cut, and then a sirloin steak came by in the form of Rex Buckley, and then the zombies were were no longer interested in Rick Crimes. The 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 trauma has caused permanent irreparable damage to his brain. He's a trauma savant. He's tough, but he's also neurotic. He has flashbacks. He, oh, I mean, I think anybody would have PTSD after being ripped apart by a pack of zombies. They're not really ripped apart, but knocked down and almost killed. Disaster survivor seems appropriate, and then he lived as a hermit until he was found by Rex. Rex Buckley convinced Rick Crimes to join him. Rick Crimes, kind of the colony bitch, I'm going to be honest with you. Cooking, plants, crafting. He does everything Rex tells him to do. And that's our setup. And then, of course, we've got the mighty bolt action rifle, the mighty plasteel hammer. And that's really it. We don't have our wrench this time because the plasteel hammer is the upgrade of the wrench. So we're rolling in that one. Let's get to it. It's been a long time since we've done this. We've got to pick through the city. We've got to see what we can find. We've got to establish a nice base. I'm going to check my audio settings as well because my microphone literally did blow up as I started recording this episode earlier. My, my original mixer shorted out my PC. So something's really, really bad going on there. So I've had to flip over to a different one. Had to do a load of settings with that one. So I'll just check, make sure that's okay before we carry on with... Oh God, so much stuff. Welcome everybody to Rimworld. Oh, look at this city. This is way different to the one we had last time. Holy shit, it's insanely different to the one we had last time. Wow, okay, this is very, very different. My god, giant Raffalesia, we've got loads of separate little buildings here. Big main road by what looks to be almost like a, like a pier style system. Wow, holy shit, this is very, very unique. This is cool though. I'm immediately thinking we need to move into the building here, huh? So we'll um, we'll probably go for that one, probably build some blocks there. Try and, try and cordon out as much of this as possible. Even living near the map edge would make a lot more sense. I mean, there's a lot of places we can live here. Maybe it's something to do with the climate. I've really no idea, but this is very, very unique. So there we are. We have our boys, Rex and Rick. We're not playing with the Fog of War mod. A lot of people did say last time that uh, obviously, obviously that was providing maybe a little bit too much obfuscation of things. We wanted to be able to watch and see what was happening out there in the world with the zombies. Man, we can actually see a lot of the treasures, though. Not all of them, because you got to remember, we've still got to go and explore these buildings. So it's not, uh, it's not a complete whitewash. Oh, there's someone with power armor and a battle rifle there. Very interesting stuff. Steel aquarium is not super useful. We got a cloth. What the fuck is that thing? Lockjaw. Okay, cool. And then we've got some various large buildings kicking around. We've got things like like food over here. Wow, this is a nice start, huh? Cool. I'm excited for this. I think this is going to be very, very fun. So round two here, obviously, we've got to worry about the zombies. But more to the point, we could play just a regular old sort of hardcore survival rim world. But with those extra difficulties going on, with the zombies that we've got to worry about, with the alpha animals, with the raiders too. Raiders can actually be a lot more impactful on our colony this time, rather than just turning up and being devoured instantly. So Rex, get your gun ready. Rick, so I think we immediately set Rick to work. Oh man, this area is quite nice too. Shit, look at this building with all the batteries in. Batteries, we've got a tailor bench there, we've got electric stove, biofuel refinery is not super useful. There is an enemy kicking around there with a charged rocket launcher. Oh lord, um, is there anyone else? There might be people hiding in the buildings, don't forget. So we've got to be very, very cautious with how we approach this. Right. Rex, I love this city. I can't get over how nice it looks compared to the other one. Rick's got his hammer. Uh, Rick, get your hammer. Right. I think we're going to live here. Let's send Rick to go and sort through this building and see what's in there. Rex is going to go and take out Thomas before this gets out of hand. Okay. So we've got... Is that Garvey fruit? I guess we are in like a... Did I just really genuinely pick a desert for us to live in for once? That's unlike me. Temperate forest. It's really not that bad. Not not bad enough that I would expect it to be like a like a like a forest there. But hey, uh, sorry, like a desert. Okay, be careful. We've got solar panels. We've got batteries of plenty. Um, well, I'm looking for out for power right now. To be completely honest with you, we'll deal with that in a second. Let's let's deal with this guy first before I get too entrenched in what we need to survive here. So we're not playing with combat extended anymore. However, we are playing with obviously lots of expanded weapons and guns mod. As you'll see if you want to take a look at the collection. That looked like hmm. Okay, well, let's see let's see what we do here. Come on, take him down. Good, fantastic shot as per usual. 
Please take him out. I mean, he's fleeing, or he's, he seems indifferent to us. He's not actually bothered. The issue is he's got a charged rocket launcher, and I don't really trust the game not for him to suddenly go, go get very angry at us and open fire. Don't do it. Don't do it. Don't do not fire. Oh, Rex, how are you taking damage? You've got armor on. Oh, my God. Are they... Right, okay. Charge. He's hitting him with the rocket launcher. We've got him down. He actually killed him dead. You ridiculous man. Was he good? He had 10 intellectual. He was very, very good, but he's very similar to the Rick Crimes we've got going on right now, so I'm not going to lose any sleep over that. Right then, Rex. We've got ourselves a charge rocket launcher. Unbelievable. How does that work? Is this single use, like the Doomsday one? Yes, it is. Fires a single anti-grain shell at precise accuracy due to laser targeting. Wow, that's very, very cool. Let's, um, let's not worry about that for now. So... Let's get Rick checking out these buildings, seeing what we've... I mean, we've already got a nice dining room there. We've got a games room as far as I'm concerned. This could be our base. We've got a big old graveyard there, which is a little bit cursed, I will admit. What is this stuff? We've got pemmican, lots more chairs. What is this? It's all made of steel as well. Rex Buckley, are you all right? Yeah, it's, it's just bruised. It's not a big deal. Let's get to exploring then, team. I'm actually really happy about this base so far. We've got lots of types of recreation already. Pool table. We've got the granite poker table. We've got the game of Ur there. The only thing we don't really have are bedrooms, things like that. What have we got here? Fuel rods. Holy shit. So those things, and potassium iodine as well, which I think is a sterilizing agent, right? Um, right to blockade of radio iodine uptake. Sure, whatever. So we've got uh, fuel rods, which are for nuclear reactors, which is going to be... That's room atomics. So that's some real endgame shit that we're not going to have to worry about for a long time. Um... What sort of area do we want to try and try and take as our base? That's the important question here. Well, let's go and have a look around. See what areas have beds. That's going to be obviously fairly important. See what facilities. Oh my god, there's a high-tech research bench just kicking around. It makes me wonder how much stuff we actually missed out on in that last city in certain buildings. Because I feel like we didn't do much exploration last time. I feel like we sort of picked a base and the first thing I did was build everything up rather than explore the city. It makes me wonder. I, I really wish before we'd ended on the last campaign, I'd just like flood. Oh my god. Steel, old computer, we've got a telescope, we've got, what is that, arcade machine, advanced components, barnic ears, this city is a gold mine, I don't think we, uh, bear in mind there are no changes to the, to the abandoned cities, you know, this is all the same, and we've played through this dozens of times, I feel like we've had dozens of different starts in abandoned cities, we've never seen anything this good before, this is, this is kind of insane, okay then, so, and there's this big building to check out, this big, okay, right, let's focus on the important stuff, bedrooms to start off with, I think this building, off the get-go should be very very that that should be top priority in fact this whole area if we could build a big old wall around it like that what do you think that would be a very very nice starting zone if we could do it build a wall directly around the roads that could be nice because that means any traders or things we get in fact there's a sort of a natural wall what if we try and get and bear with me on this one this could be massively massively over overzealous over ambitious we take this whole thing. You see those natural wards that are already in place? We take all of this. It could be difficult, but it gives us loads of loads of areas for farming. We've got pod launchers there. We've got farms. We've got batteries. We've got, you know, research benches. We've got everything we could ever need for quite some time here. Um, I'm going to have Rick do that. I'm actually going to have Rick Crimes work on that immediately. So there's lots of wards already that we might want to deconstruct. I'm thinking we set up a stockpile somewhere. No reason why we can't turn these two rooms over here into a stockpile. So I'm just going to press the claim button and we're going to grab all of it. This is cool. This is a very, very, very nice start. Now, obviously, it might not last too long with me playing um, because I'm terrible at Rimworld, but that's okay. Let's see just how much we can grab here. Right, okay. Give me give me all of this. All this all this is now mine. I've decided it's mine because I've randomly wandered here, and that's just how we do it. Okay, so we got a lot of batteries to reinstall as well. Let's make sure that we've got... Oh, there's another person there. Enemy mercenary sniper. Could be dangerous. What have we got here? We've got a mop suit. Okay, so we've got some sort of camouflage, slightly bulked out suit there. Very nice. Loads of creepy trees and raffleesia. I mean, why would you grow Oh my god, is that a, a grove of ambrosia? What the hell? Who was living in this strange city? Full-blown power armor. Now Rex is bloodlusted. So if we get this power armor, he can wear it without anything to worry about. Marine helmet, marine armor, smoke pot belt, higher tier rifle. Haven't got to worry about ammo, because of course we're not playing with combat standard or anything like that. This could be the blessing we're really after. Then we could give Rick Rex's old armor, which suits Rick, to be honest with you. He is a bit of a, like I said, he's a bit of the colony bitch right now. Um, okay, so this area is also going nice. Plenty of meals everywhere, too. If we need meals for the time being, it's a relatively safe city, so we haven't got too much to worry about. Let's go and see if we can take out that sniper. Last thing we want is to be, you know, settling down for the night and then have that sniper sneak into our bedroom and kill us dead. Rick, I need to, to give you a job then, don't I, my friend? Um, so... Let's set up their priorities to start off with here. So, firefighter, patient, doctor, surgeon, that's fine. Bed rest, hall. This is all good. I don't know why I'm not using this, to be honest with you. Rearm, 
irrelevant. Refuel, I'm going to try and avoid as well. Basics should be top tier. Wardening, Rex, I'm going to say that's your number one job. Don't worry about entertaining guests. Don't worry about handling or training. Butchering and cooking is, of course, uh, Rick's, going to be Rick's top tier job as well. I'll try and implement that system I talked about last series, whereby we only save number one jobs for emergencies or the super important stuff. Like all of this, I would say is super important. Everything else, we will try and have a uh, maximum of tier two. So things like construction, very important, but we'll say maximum tier two. Repair right now is not going to be too irrelevant. Similarly, we want this done as well. Do you want it to be harvesting, growing, then cooking? No, cooking, if he hasn't got any resources, harvesting, growing, and then butchering. Suppress the hiccups. Do not let them win. Plant cutting. Same story, really. I think we'll have that tier two, because that's generally very useful. Oh, God, I'm going to have to stand upside down and drink some water, aren't I? Okay, get rid of all this garbage. Good Lord, come on. Help me here. So, Rick, we can more or less leave to do his own stuff for the time being. I'm going to allow everything on the map. He can haul everything on the map. We're going to set up a big stop pile, and we're just going to have this guy go and grab everything from... Everywhere on the map. He should automate that because he doesn't really have any other jobs to do. Oh, Lord. That's our home area. Um, let's turn that off for the time being because I really despise when Remord insists on putting a home area around everything. Let's remove this as well. I am going to install a cleaning area mod. I actually forgot to do it this time around. We'll make sure that's installed because that will save us so much time and with home areas, fortifying places, making sure we're not going to get overrun by zombies, things like that. That would be kind of essential that they're not going out and cleaning the sort of outside walls or zombie blood that's splattered off of the doors or things like that. Let's allow this as a stockpile zone then. Something like that would do for the time being. Cool. We might as well set this door to stay open as well because it's a big old bloody sandstone door. So Rick now, if we tab and untab him, there he goes. So he's going to go and gather everything and take it up back to the base. Rex, you're in charge of exploring. This way we only have to really focus on one character at a time while the other character has stuff to do. What is this base? Look at this. Is that a jade, a jade billiards table? And loads of random dogs as well. We've got like our poodle there. We've got a pug. We've got a French bulldog. I will save you little doggos. We've got a Somali cat. So I'm playing with a lot of the, um, some of my favorite mods actually. The vanilla expanded mods. There's loads of stuff. Vanilla expanded furniture. Vanilla expanded animals. It's a great series of mods that really, really fit in. But the, the one thing that really annoys me about Remod is, is where you download. Even something that, you know, I, I personally really like. The vegetable garden mod. The aesthetics of it just don't fit in with Remod. Now this person's definitely going to shoot us. Which is why I love the vanilla expanded stuff. Look at these plants. It looks so nice. I do have a graphic setting mod as well to uh, help buff everything up. Right, we've got the drop on them now. We've got the drop on them now. Yeah, you run and gun. Oh, good shot, Rex. They've got a sniper. So I'm going to say, I'm going to say we sneak through. What is this stuff? Slate. Slate bedroom. Cool. Okay, we come and reclaim that later on. And we can also have Rick reinstalling things as well. We'll set up a whole bunch of stuff to be reinstalled. Unpause it. Just let him get to work. So right now, what's he doing? Gathering gold. We need that for multi-analyzers, things like that. Let's get into melee range with this guy because I don't really fancy... I don't really fancy getting into a long-range gunfight with a sniper. I think that's a dangerous idea. Good. Especially when his shooting skill is that impressive. Get closer. Close the gap. Kick his head in. He's got lower melee. He's also not armored, unlike us. Oh, my God. If you lose this, Rex. Rex, if you lose this, we are gonna, we're going to have an argument, my friend. Duck, oh, nice. A stun. Good work. Oh, good work. This is it. Deflected off the armor there. Come on, Rex. It's one person, please. Rex, 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 Rex. Okay, I might need to set him to self-tend temporarily. Um, Rex can self-tend. Let's turn that on as well. Oh, God. Is he all right? His left ring finger. He snapped off his finger. You psychopath. Okay, we're doing all right damage here, but it is taking a very, very long... Oh, that was good. Just knock him down. Don't kill them. Just... Really? Really? A man of your talents in armor. You, no you, you got knocked down by a guy who's done nothing and then a randomer. Here's what we're going to do. Rick, we'll send Rick, send Rick on a rescue mission. Go get that power armor. Go get that power armor, Rick. You're going to prove yourself to this team. You're going to prove yourself to everybody here. It's good, good shooting, actually. Much more than I intended to give him there. Right, speed through. They're not going to kill Rex. They're just going to leave him on the floor, flailing around. Is he bleeding out? 24 hours. That gives us, as far as I remember, 24 hours is exactly one day. Gives us a day to save him. Strip this body. Wear that armor. Oh, my God. Look at how fast the game runs now that we haven't got a million zombies on the map. Weird, huh? Ready for battle. Pick up your pick up your hammer. No, no, no. We'll come back for the hammer. It's okay. Let's go and save. Let's go and save Rick. Let's go and save Rex. Maybe this is how Rex and Rex finally get the respect, the mutual respect for one another. Rick doesn't like Rex because though he is a man who's capable of survival, he's a, he's a big head. He's, he's conceited. He is arrogant. And he's a man who always tells Rick what to do. And Rick obviously isn't going to like that. No. <laughs> Did he take you down in one shot? Rick. You've done things. You've done things for this colony. No man should have had to have been forced to do. Right. That is now a medical bed. Save him. Rescue Rex. 
Wow, great start to things, huh? We found some really cool stuff. I'm particular. I'm a particular big fan of that jade table or whatever it was. Right, you're gonna have to doctor, even though you're garbage at it. We don't really have a choice here. What's he doing? Sleeping? Oh, tending to Rex. Has he found medicine? Is that it? Um, oh, there's uh, those those medicinal cactus pine quills. So we did see this very briefly. It's from the drop pod event from Alpha Animals. So it basically just acts as herbal medicine. It's it's nothing particularly impressive there, unfortunately. Four days, twelve hours until the zombies come. Let them come. Bring them on. Okay, here we go. What the fuck was that? Someone's being ripped apart by something. Okay. Great, great. Absolutely fantastic. I'm really glad that we got this armor and things that we did. Let's let's get Rick to go and drop this armor for Rex again. Rex can have this armor because it's old, it's tainted, and obviously it's going to drive poor old Rick insane. There you go, Rex. You, you leave this behind for him. That's a gift. A gift for you, Rex. What a what a peace treaty. These two are going to be the best of friends in no time now, huh? In fact, you could have that sniper rifle. I imagine the sniper rifle is a bit of a step up from a... Did you just pick that up? Bit of a step up from the uh, bolt action rifle, huh? There we go. Do you want to grab yourself some meals as well? And uh, I guess, go about your business. Holy shit. Thank you, Randy. Every male colonist of the male gender, sorry. Every colonist of the male gender smiles with contentment. Thank you. Um, so let's get stuff some re let's get some stuff reinstalled as well. Two beds over here is very, very nice. So we just want to set up sort of two bedrooms ready to start off with. I'm seeing two rooms of equivalent sort of size here. So we get that bed reinstalled for one of them. We'll get this bed reinstalled and this one for the other. Can we move doors? We do have the minify everything, but obviously it's my settings here to make it not so ridiculous because last time it was maybe a little bit too far. Um, let's go and get that dealt with. Let's disconstruct, disconstruct, deconstruct the slate wall here and then we'll border these two off here. So this will be one bedroom and then this will be another bedroom opening into this hallway. We are still playing with things like Dubs Hygiene Mod, so I do need to worry about water and things like that. I actually completely forgot about that shit. Um, water, 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 water. Where's a well? Primitive well. That'll do things. Um, let's put that... Actually, we're very lucky in terms of our water placement, given where I wanted to put the base, huh? That's insane. We'll drop it there, and then we need to find some wood from somewhere. We could dig up these, dig up these floors. We could remove these walls as well. Um, oh, there's a lot of doors. We're not going to probably use this building and its doors, I'll be honest with you. So let's go and get those deconstructed. Rick is going to haul some beds over. Rex, are you all right? Thrombos as well. Is he ever going to get out of bed? Are you are you capable of walking yet? Oh, he is. Okay, cool. Get that marine armor on then. Good work. Right, so that also doesn't count as tainted. So if we want Rick to wear armor, he's got himself some, some slightly better stuff there. Get this gun equipped. And you, my friend, are well and truly decked out with some nice gear. That's incredible stuff. Let's go back to exploring then. So we've got, a, very importantly here, a vitals monitor, which could be, I mean, actually the difference between life and death. Not so much an expression there. Wow, we've got a lot of extra beds, more vitals monitors, more medicine. This could be one of the best starts we've ever had in the in the cities mod. This could genuinely be one of the best. Oh my god, 14 glitter tech as well. This is insane. What's Rick up to? Still gathering some stuff. He's actually putting on that armor too. Nice stuff. I'm really glad we can sort of... Uh, Focus more on Rex, let it micro while Rick does some of the some of the heavy lifting here in the background. Let's go check out this building, because I feel like a lot of them, you know, I, I generally missed out on a lot of things just because it was so far away. We've got telescope. Oh my god, there's so much new terrain. Um, and of course, as we explore these new buildings, we are going to have to allow all again to get Rick to go over and haul it. This is very, very nice. How are we doing in terms of the base development then, Rick? Are we looking at some bedroom setup? We've got a couple of beds. He hasn't started working on the walls yet. I do need to make him go... Oh, Rex is our builder. Right, that explains a lot. Um, constructing is reinstalling, isn't it? What is reinstalling? Is that... I mean, I assume it is. We'll just put that to two. Deconstructing goes to... I mean, he's got some skill in it. Five out of 20 is not bad at all. I think if we give him the hammer as well, wherever the hell that's gone, um, it's all the way up there still. We'll, we'll mark all this for urgent hauling. I might just let Rex go and live his life now. Go and send him back to the house for a couple of days, and we'll do a bit more ex exploring tomorrow when they've had a good night's sleep. Thank you, Randy. Perfect. Uh, mad horses. How many mad horses are there? Oh my god, that's actually quite a few. Okay, we're up three there. Three, four. Oh god, there's a lot of horses. Five horses. Okay, well, to be fair, we're quite well equipped. The issue is we can't really, unlike a regular manhunt pack or anything like that, we can't really afford to just sit inside the house until nighttime and wait for them to piss off. So I think we are going to have to deal with them here, but Rex is on very low rest, very low recreation. So I'm just kind of praying that between the two of them... Oh my god, look at how cool Rick looks. He looks like goddamn... He's got his glasses under his helmet. That's so cool. Looks like Robocop. Okay, let's get them squatted up. Let's get them in an area where we'll see the horses coming from a literal mile away. So, oh. Well, apparently Rex is already being shot at. Oh, God. Um, Rick, 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 Rick. Move him over. So, you're probably wondering why was that blue and red for a while. That's to do with the friendly fire mod. So, he cannot fire at those horses because Rex is in the way, marked in green. So, if we move Rex over here, you might notice that those will... Oh, God. Don't let the colony end like this. Don't let the colony end like this. Please. You can't do it. Randy, that would be cruel even by your standards. Run. 
Get through the doors. Get through the doors. There we go. Okay. Good, 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 good. Get out of there. I think we're safe. We've trapped them indoors. I think we're safe. Okay. Rescue Rex. No, don't let the colony end like this. I refuse. I think the horses are just going to run around in madness all day. So we should be fine. Holy shit. What a, that was a, a real close call all of a sudden, huh? Good God. Right, get into the bed there. Where is, where is Rick? Good work, Rick. You two take the day off. You might actually have to tend to him as well. Is he all right? He hasn't, like, lost anything yet. No, just a load of... His sniper rifle and all that, all that combat he had, even from the guy with the charged rocket launcher, hasn't been dealt with yet. So this is incredibly dangerous. What's this person wearing? Another dead person there. Um, a bird skin scarf. Not really going to prioritize that if you don't mind too much. And this, this is the important thing. I ain't going to let you guys vote on it. Honestly, I came up with the last one. It was terrible. The top up voted comment suggesting both a, a... It can be either. You can suggest just the faction name or you can suggest just the city name if you want. I'm open to either. Whatever the top up voted ones are, you guys can have it. I'll leave this in the hands of the community and you guys can decide what Rex and Rick will call their new and very impressive home. Thank you all for watching. We are going to leave that one here for today. I apologize that it was a lot of explanation and, uh, well, still a fair amount of gameplay, but I think the first 10 minutes or so were explanation of things. I'll make sure that I have model list and load order and everything is in the description for when this goes live. So if you want to play this for yourself, feel free to check out the description and go and have a look at the Steam Workshop page. And uh, there should be some install instructions for those of you who haven't ever installed anything with mod loader as well. I'll make sure that's around. Our uh, advanced mod manager? What is it called now? I don't know, but it doesn't matter. Unfortunately, I've still not have my Patreon list because Patreon are updating them for the new month. They should be hopefully done definitely by, well, maybe even now. I'll have to double check after that I'm done here. But thank you to all you guys who have carried on your Patreon for another month there. I'm going to start doing a couple of videos over on that platform too. Just to explain, it's not going to be like a gated off content or anything like that, but Patreon specific, Patreon based videos. So wouldn't be any interest to anyone if they're not on Patreon anyway. So keep a close eye on that one. And we'll be back tomorrow for more adventures of Rex and Rick.